Welcome to Equity Within and Unscripted, conversations with your smart friends about the stuff that matters. I'm Yvonne, and this is my son, Xander. Today we're going to be talking about a play that we saw this weekend at Catastrophic Theater in Houston. Catastrophic Theater is a small avant-garde theater company that produces really brave and incredible work. I am, have been a fan of their work for over 20 years, and I'm currently on the board of Catastrophic um, and feel very fortunate to be able to, uh, to be a part of this theater company. I've been, over the past year, taking my son to um, some of their plays, uh, and this past play is, is truly one of the bravest and most controversial of their plays. It's played by Sarah Kane, who is, uh, was known as one of the leaders of in-your-face theater in, in Britain in, I want to say, the, not, not the 90s, probably about the, the mid-90s. And Catastrophic has produced several of her plays before. One of them I saw years ago called Phaedra's Love. Phaedra's Love. And this one is called Cleansed. And so that's what our topic is going to be about today. Now I want to just kind of run through the kinds of things that we want. I want to share with you what we love about Catastrophic, why, why this play, even though it was extraordinarily challenging and even uncomfortable to watch, at least for me and for quite a few of the other audience members, why this play um, on, in its premiere here in Houston got a standing ovation. So I'm going to set up uh, by starting to talk with Zan about it. And the fact that, mm -hmm. <laughs> that I, the play, Sarah Kane said the play was about love. And yet there's a great deal of violence and extraordinarily, extraordinary pain within the play. But I noted that every character, I think, at some point says, I love you. But you also come away with feeling uncomfortable about like who's deserving of love and uh, what kind of love is okay, unrequited love, those kinds of things. How did you see love kind of portrayed in the play without giving too much away? What were your thoughts, Sander? Uh, well, it was vulnerable and intimate love but also questionable love like love doesn't mean healthy mm -hmm. so yeah there was lots of that that you know wouldn't be considered healthy if you went to your therapist but uh, but it was still love but it was still love and, and the characters still loved each other even if they were it was twisted in some ways yeah yeah it, it was there were all kinds of explorations of different types of love. And like you said, some of that love was unhealthy or might have been, might be considered unhealthy, but by whom, right? And so you're, you're kind of thrown in this where you're seeing these like exemplars of different types of love. And as an audience, it, it is in your face, right? You're, 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 it's uncomfortable. And I remember at one point, trying to make sense of the play, trying to almost force it into a narrative arc, the way that I'm used to stories being told. And then I remember telling myself, stop, get out of your head and out of your brain and like just feel the uncomfortable feelings that are being brought up for you. And you and I talked about that, Xander, and you said that, that you thought that was almost the point too, that it should evoke this visceral response. Yeah, I think that um, it was great that people, you can't make sense of it. I think that's good because we try, we try too hard to make sense of things. Like we try too hard to intellectualize things and this play isn't meant to be that. I don't think so. I think it's meant to make you feel how the characters feel or, or feel uncomfortable. It's meant to bring emotions that you don't bring up to yourself. Things that you would never just bring up being you. Yeah. Things that would happen unnaturally. Yeah, yeah. And, and Sarah Kane, it's, it's well known, suffered from uh, mental illness, suffered a great deal from depression, um, and took her life. And I, I the, the play takes place in an in institution, which felt to me like, felt like a mental hospital. 
And in that institution, people are experiencing things that, that are painful, that make you feel really uncomfortable. And I felt like it may have been like the emotions that Sarah Kane what had been become familiar with it is like exposed, like you mentioned the word vulnerable, invulnerably on that stage and, and shared with the audience and by the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things we talked about was the role of gender in the play. There's gender is, is, is more than a theme in the play. It's kind of like, um, a character in the play, I thought. What were your thoughts about gender in the play? Uh, like a tool. A tool? Yeah. And I think that it was like, a, I don't know, like a, why, a reason I say it was a tool, it felt like the characters were using gender to uh, self-actualize, but, you know, it wasn't really the point of their development. Like, gender wasn't really giving that to them, but they thought that it could. Hmm. Gender was like a tool of self-actualization. That's kind of what, yeah. Yeah. That's what it felt like. That's what it felt like. That's interesting. Can you say more? Well, people felt trapped. And I think that when a lot of, you know, I don't, I'm not transgender, but a Mm -hmm. lot of them probably feel trapped in their bodies. Mm -hmm. And then there was, I think there's a lot of that theme, not just being trapped in the bodies, but in the institution and the relationships they were in, yeah, it was like they were stuck and trapped. It, it was hopeless, and, but, you know, there's also a lot about gender and changing gender even. Yes, yeah. And not being, not liking the body you're in. Not liking the body you're in. One of the characters says that. Like, and that I, wasn't just about gender. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was not liking who you are, or where you are, or the body you're in, especially the body. It's body horror. Body horror. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Which yeah. Which is something I think a lot of transgender people go through and a lot of non-binary people go through is body horror. And, and I think, I think that's a great point. I think if you don't have those experiences as, you know, being non-binary or transgender, there are still ways of entry into that feeling of not wanting to be in the body that you're in and not liking the body that you're in. Um, the, you know, people with eating disorders or, you know, um, even the violence that comes upon your body as a black body in, you know, Western society and in America in particular, wanting to kill the body, you know, yeah. um, others wanting to kill the body. So I appreciate what you're saying about body horror um, being within the play. Yeah, it's, it's not just a, a gender theme. Mm-hmm. That's a people. Right. Like a lot of people are, don't like their bodies. Right. Right. And that's, but that's a vulnerable place to be. Yes. And it's a vulnerable thing to speak about that you don't hear people just in public talking about how they don't like themselves Mm. or their bodies, especially. Yes. Yeah. So those are the kinds of things that come up. I mean, it's just not just come up that are on full display. And, and again, I want to kind of touch on the back to the theme of love because there are characters in this play who love each other and who you want them to be able to express their love fully. Um, characters in the play who you may feel are undeserving of love and, and, and yet receive love. And so I was thinking about that and thinking about like why, why in my mind, I felt like I was judging who was deserving and, and undeserving of love. Yet that's also a theme within the play because the people, there are people in the play who clearly are seen as undesirable within the play, um, which is part of the reason they're in the, the institution um, and part of the reason that the violence is visited upon them. Who decides who's undesirable? Where does that even come from? And who, like, again, who deserves love, right? I don't know. I just felt like there was a lot of that in this play that made me think about the concept that we, I, I, I'm just going to say, I, I feel like I got this from society. Um, this message that only certain bodies and certain people who display certain characteristics that are acceptable by society are deserving of love. You 
mentioned body horror, and I think you like you like anime and manga a lot, and I think a lot of people in your generation, millennials and Gen Z and Gen Alpha, are really attracted to anime and manga. And one of the things that I notice in the storytelling and the, the ones that you've shown me are they will go th- into darker themes and dark darker emotional experiences than a lot of typical Western storytelling, right? And, 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 and cinema and, and books. And I think body horror is one of those ideas and concepts that's within anime and manga that we don't always see like in typical, you know, Western storytelling, right? Yes. I think that with Hollywood kind of storytelling is, they're not as like, um, what I'm, what's the word I'm looking for? Visceral, raw, raw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with how they portray these those kinds of concepts. Um, that's not to say all of it is. Of course, there are amazing movies that do the same things, but in anime, it's kind of common. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like, yeah. There are lots of anime that are known for just being messed up and disturbing and mm-hmm. dark and body horror. But I do know that that raw and visceral feeling is why I'm into anime because mm-hmm. you can't get it in a lot of Western media. It's, it feels like they're pretending mm. a lot of it. They're pretending they're like living a life that doesn't exist in real life. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's ironic to me that in anime, it feels less like they're pretending. Right. They, they feel more real sometimes than the human portrayals we see on TV because those feel unnatural and unrealistic. Mm-hmm. Whereas when it's a drawing, and you attach emotionally to it. It's a new world to explore. It can't be. It can't be pretending. They can't pretend they're characters. Mm-hmm. Right. Whereas right. the people you know, those are people pretending to be something they're not. It's a different experience, mm. and it's more raw, more real, more visceral, and, I, and that shows up in the content of anime as well. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And so this this play. The, the portrayal of the emotions and the emotions that it evokes is kind of similar to what you've described in like even anime and manga. Yes. Yeah. So I want to talk about love and vulnerability again, because again, like you said, I think that these are big themes in the play. Vulnerability is a theme in the play. One of the questions I think it asks is, uh, can you ever really know someone? Um, and can you ever really, can you love somebody forever? Can you really commit to someone? Do you need to know someone in order to love them? What were your first thoughts about that? My, my opinion? Yeah, whatever you want to share. Uh, for the last question, no, I don't think you need to know someone to love them. Um, but then again, I would question what does knowing somebody mean? Because you can think you know someone and know nothing about them, really. But does that make what you know less real than what the person knows about themselves? That's another question I would have. Mm -hmm. And and I think all of that shows up in the play, too. Yeah. Between several of the characters. One character thinks they know themselves and commits, you know, because they think they know they can. Um, Another character questions that, whether or not that's possible, right? And says, it's okay that you think that and I'll accept that and I will love you as well, but seems less committed. Yeah. And, but whether, but the, you know, the play app, you know, troubles that and, and asks you to ask yourself and, and see from the characters whether or not that's even true. And what is commitment? And what is commitment? What is true commitment? And the, one of the characters, uh, they talk about, you know, I'm here for you now. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm here for you now. I can't promise later. Right. I'm here now. And I think that was interesting. Like, I'll always, or not always, there was no always. It's, I can give you now. Yeah. Yeah. And and reality is these series of nows. It's, a, I mean, there only is now. There only is there now. There is nothing but now. Right. Anything else is a memory or, or you, uh, some sort of something that's created by your mind. Right. You don't actually have access to it anymore, to the past. Wow, interesting. I also 
the concept of knowing someone, there's a line in the play. I don't think it's giving too much away when the person says, you know, that they love this person and then asks, you know, what their name is. And I told you there's a door song like that that goes, you know, hello, I love you, won't you tell me your name? Which is funny, but you were like, but it's true. Yeah. You know, um, that... In fact, I think that not knowing someone's, you know, other aspects of their identity allows you to appreciate aspects of their identity that they might may not appreciate themselves. Mm -hmm. Because when you see something in someone that they don't see in themselves, it can sometimes be something they don't like about themselves. Mm -hmm. But when you choose to like that, or when you do just, just naturally like that, you know, that's still them that you like. Right. Even if they don't like that, mm -hmm. it's still real. It's and still you can real. still love that. You yeah. don't have to know them to love that. You just need to know a piece of them. Well, that's interesting, too. Yeah, yeah, that, that's interesting. And that goes back to the theme of vulnerability that shows up. Because, you know, when you're vulnerable, you're allowing yourself to be known. And right? seen. And seen. And seen. And felt. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned, I remember you saying, when we walked out of the theater... One of the first things you said was you could never do that because the people in the play, the, the actors, showed their own vulnerability. Can you talk more about that? Mm, yeah, I'm not ever doing what they would do, ever, <laughs> in any sense, of, unless I had to, to save your life or something, <laughs> which even then I'd think about it. <laughs> so, yeah, I am... Um, like, what are you asking? <laughs> okay, what 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 was vulnerable to you about, so vulnerable to you about their performances that you were like, your first response after seeing it was, I would never do that? Um, they showed themselves in mm -hmm. their entirety mm -hmm. in more ways than one. Uh-huh. And I'm not comfortable with doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with showing the sides I'm comfortable with. Yes. In myself. And I'm comfortable with people seeing those. If you see something in me that I'm not showing you, then that's fine. But it's not something I like. And it's uncomfortable. Yeah. It doesn't. It's not comfortable. And not something you would have intended. <laughs> no, it's not. It wouldn't be up to me if someone else saw something other than what I'm showing. Yes. So in that sense, you're talking about like the kind of the performances we all do in our day to day lives. Yeah, we're all performing. We're all performing and showing certain aspects of ourselves. And it's you, our ego. Yes. And some people can see through our ego. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the ego doesn't like that. Right. And my ego doesn't like that. But in the, what, so what they were doing on the stage was so It vulnerable. was like a destruction of their ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ego didn't matter in that. Yeah. It, it wasn't ego. They were all being true. Even the characters themselves were just, were them. Like, they, they there wasn't a lot of hiding or even. pretense yeah mm -hmm. it was very on the nose yeah yeah which is part of the reason i think as you have kind of implied that they're showing themselves the the stylized nudity is part of the play and an important part of the play it's it's a message there's meshes there like, mm -hmm. it's on the nose yeah like, <laughs> yeah 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 okay well what did you what did you think overall because i think that I saw your some of your reactions. You know, I was like on the edge of my seat. I was uncomfortable and kind of just really in the moment watching the play and experiencing it. And I saw at one point you smiling. Yeah, I was just smiling. I do that creepy smile <laughs> that I do because I just it, it hit something for me that I could relate to. That I and I was like I watching everyone else be uncomfortable and that made me happy <laughs> because I like to be a part of the uncomfortable. It's like, I like to be comfortable there. Yeah. And it made me feel comforted when I watched this play, even though it was disturbing. I think a lot of disturbing things actually comfort. Yeah. Tell me more about why you felt comfortable. I'm the kind of person who feels uncomfortable. I feel uncomfortable around normal people. Normal, and whatever you think normal is, it's, it's when people are performing and act like they're not performing. That makes me uncomfortable. But there, there was no performance. Even though it was a performance, it was realer than the people sitting next to us because those people were uncomfortable and I was comfort, comfort, comforted by it mm -hmm. because 
it, it wasn't denying the thoughts that I had. It wasn't shunning them. It was listening to them. And, and the, mm. even if they're disturbing and morally wrong in whatever sense of the word, they're real in their mind and they're here. And I felt seen by that mm. because I have some pretty nasty thoughts mm. that I have no control over. They yeah, don't, They don't say anything about who I am as a person. And I think that, that normal people, <laughs> they, they put too much on like moral moral judgment and there was no moral judgment here and what is it that they say art is com- meant disturb. to disturb the comfortable and and comfort the disturbed mm-hmm. or something like that yeah and yeah. i think that play is the uh, the peak of that yeah yeah and that what you're saying too is the it's valid showing this um, on, on, you know, on stage just, is, is more than valid. It's, it, important. it's important because it is part of the human experience. These are, these are thoughts that lots of people have that they shun, they right? Push down. Yeah. Yeah. Dark parts of the psyche. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I think that concludes uh, this episode of Equity Within Unscripted. This episode was about the play Cleansed by Sarah Kane, and which is currently ongoing at Catastrophic Theater in Houston. It's not a play for everybody, as you can probably tell from the things that we just talked about, but it is a play that shows aspects of the human experience that are not often on display. And that's why I think this theater company is so valuable and important um, and a beautiful part of Uh, the landscape of Houston and Houston's art scene. Thanks. Bye. (laughs) This is Equity Within Unscripted with Yvonne and Xander. If you like what you hear, follow us on YouTube, on Spotify, and join our Discord group. See you soon.